Hello, I'm Dan Teague from the North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics, and I'm going to be talking about the residue of mathematics. <laughs> residue. Residue is what's left over. So I want us to think about the residue of our courses. What's left over after the course? What do they take away with them as they go on to their lives? This really helps me focus on what's most important in my class and helps me organize my priorities by thinking about what does I really want them to know long after the course is over and how do I achieve that goal? I just had my 40th reunion. The residue of mathematics for my colleagues is just a bunch of mindless algebra games. None of it made sense. They were very good at doing it, but they saw no purpose or value in it and quit as soon as they could. This is the mathematical version of Orwell's How Many Fingers Do You See? <laughs> Under punishment of grade, we forced them to say 11 operations is simpler than five. We think it makes sense. It doesn't even make particularly good nonsense. So let's do a thought of experiment. Suppose the end of course grade is given not at the end of this year, but the end of next year. The AP course isn't this May, but they're going to take your course exam the following May. Would you change the way you teach? I think you would. And I think that's really important for us to think about why and how. Would we make it so that we organize our course so that the students created more of the course themselves? Would we engage them in thinking and developing and creating mathematical investigations and discourse? Picard will eventually have it right. Engagement is the key. Engaging student in mathematical investigations. Every time you tell a student something they could figure out for themselves, you lessen their possibilities. Let them use your own mind. Don't force them to think with your mind. Let them create it themselves if they can, to the level and extent that they can. I was once told about Volvos changing the way the assembly line, rather they'd have a group of people move down the line with the car. So these 20 people built this car. If the car is still in service 20 years later, they can get a bonus in their retirement check. This is thought experiment two. Suppose you got a bonus check every time a student you taught used something you taught them. Now, not in the next math class. After school's over. Factoring quadratics, that's going to be a real cash cow, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's what we really want. This is relentless. There's something really interesting I want to say about this. I have no slightest idea of what it is. Uh, so imagine I'm saying something really clever right now. Okay. Would, would you get money, would your retirement be boosted by that second sentence? Would your kids recognize and interpret correctly the meaning of slope? Now you can say, but that's not how slope is tested. But that's how the residue of slope will be tested. Those are the questions they need to be able to answer. I'll let this slide speak for itself. The normal curve that's the distribution you would expect your kids to do if they took the test before you taught the course. Why on earth will you insist upon a normal distribution after we taught the course? That makes no sense. Lou Douglas last night made this really, really interesting observation. The, having the goal of good test scores leads to bad teaching. It's got to be a consequence, our artifact of quality instruction, not the goal in and of itself. What is the authentic test of mathematics? What are the kinds of questions they're going to need to answer, um, which is hidden behind the cloud? Um, so will the students I taught 35 years ago be using the residue of their mathematics to figure out whether they should get a stent or a bypass, for example? And the answer is no, because that's what I taught them. A bunch of manipulations. There's no way they could possibly use that. Now, I was around back in the good old days when every teacher was above average, and I can tell you this idea that we're bad now is pure nonsense. We are preparing kids for the 60s as well as we ever have. <laughs> <laughs> it's, part of the, it's part of the program to complain about the tug of war with our kids, but we do have to remember a couple of things. These kids are the best kids the parents have. They're not keeping the good ones at home. Okay? They're sending them to, to us and we need to treat them accordingly. We need to teach math as if it's important to them, as if their lives depended on it, because in many ways it really does. 
Now, um, we need to teach in a way that the residue is there and present and purposeful. Thank you.